Hello everyone, so during this video today we'll be covering this Argentinosaurus skeleton with clay one could say, and we'll be learning some fun facts about this dinosaur along the way. Although you could say this dinosaur isn't entirely scientifically accurate anyway. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, and thank you for tuning in to Moose Motion. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if you're new, and be sure you have your post notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new content. Anyway, thank you for your support, it's highly appreciated. Welcome to part 2 of the Zombie Dinosaur Project, or the Argentinosaurus from Primal. So to start this video off, I'm going to do some painting, you could say. It's easier to get that out of the way before the sculpting takes place, you could say. Now, obviously, during part one, we built the skeleton. Now, during part two, I'll be adding a lot of plasticine clay, you could say, and basically building up the layers of muscle today. I was hoping to have this project done, you could say, but unfortunately, life had some delays. Because normally, I don't break down my dinosaur projects into, well, three parts, but unfortunately, with this one, I think I'm going to try and make that maybe the new normal. Because generally, I find usually part one is kind of easy, and then part two is kind of like, a, oh my god, I need to just get all of this done add feathers and details it generally just kind of ends up being a lot more stressful than it is fun at that point so for my sake we're probably going to try and make that the new normal is break it down into three parts therefore give me a little bit more time to well actually make these dinosaurs and perhaps get a little bit more sleep because that would be nice because that sleep schedule has definitely gone down the drain since i've started this well youtube thing however i must admit we have definitely picked up quite a few new subscribers as of lately and i can't thank you all enough it's quite nice to actually get some notoriety for all this hard work finally and if you do appreciate all the hard work that goes into these sculptures, as well as the commentary, which I should probably get into the fun facts about this dinosaur pretty quick here, because I've been ranting on a little too long, I think, you could let me know just by hitting the like button below. So last time, in part 1, during the commentary, I covered, well, sauropods as a whole, because I was having a tough time actually finding, well, some fun facts about Argentinosaurus itself. However, I have some good news. I was able to actually find quite a lot actually on Argentinosaurus at this point. So without further delay, let's dive into the fun facts about this massive sauropod. Argentinosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period, 92 to 100 million years ago in South Argentina. Sadly, it's only known from fragmentary remains, although it's thought to be one of the largest animals that has ever walked the earth or perhaps even the largest. With size estimations ranging from 50 to 100,000 kilograms, or 88 to 110 short tons, at 30 to 40 meters long, or 120 feet, at 70 feet tall, or 21.4 meters, it's pretty easy to understand why some people assume this thing is the largest animal that has ever walked the earth. It was a member of Typosauria, which was the dominant group of sauropods during the late Cretaceous. Although, sadly, the genus is only known from currently one species at the moment. Known as Argentinosaurus huoncolensis, otherwise known as Argentinosaurus, which I will probably only refer to as because I don't really feel like saying that mouthful the entire time, unfortunately. But cool fact that basically Huoncolensis, part of the name, is basically dedicated to the region in which it was found. The basic name Argentinosaurus means Argentine lizard. Argentinosaurus is among the largest known land animals. However, it's hard to get an accurate estimation due to the fact it's known by fragmentary remains only with 3.5% of the whole skeleton. To counter this, scientists can compare other known material from other smaller related sauropods known for more complete remains. The more complete taxon can then be scaled up to match the dimensions of Argentinosaurus. Mass can then be estimated known using relations between certain bone measurements, and body mass can also be estimated through the use of models. To put this into perspective, the average blue whale is probably about the same length as the Argentinosaurus. However, the mass of the whale is larger due to the fact, well, it doesn't really have to deal with gravity because it lives in water. It's possible Argentinosaurus was the largest dinosaur that ever existed. However, there might be a longer known sauropod called the Supersaurus. Its estimations are more accurate between 39 and 40 meters long. However, Argentinosaurus was definitely heavier because Supersaurus estimated to be 31 to 36 tons. Argentinosaurus was first found in 1987 by Guillermo Heredia, 
I hope I'm pronouncing the name right and didn't butcher that, but apparently he's a rancher from Argentina and was looking for petrified wood when he came across the Argentinosaurus. I guess that was a pleasant surprise. In 1989, a larger dig was initiated and multiple vertebrae and damaged pelvis bones were discovered, resulting in the holotype specimen of Argentinosaurus. In 1996, scientists found a femur bone in the same location as the holotype, however, the bone was deformed during fossilization. And in 2004, a femur bone was assigned to the genus, however, it only preserved the shaft of the bone. It should probably be mentioned, as of today, it's hard to know if any of these femora actually do belong to Argentinosaurus, though. Argentinosaurus likely possessed 10 dorsal vertebrae like other titanosaurs. The vertebrae was even massive for sauropods. One dorsal vertebrae had a reconstructed height of 159 centimeters and a width of 129 centimeters. To put this into perspective, a single vertebrae was taller than an average bear. The vertebrae were eternally lightened by a complex pattern of numerous air-filled chambers. For example, both the dorsal and sigral vertebrae had large cavities, measuring 4 to 6 centimeters in diameter. The dorsal ribs were tubular and cylindrical in shape, in contrast with other titanosaurs and possibly hollow. It is also possible that this is due to erosion after death to the individual. The giant size of Argentinosaurus and other sauropods was likely made possible by other contributing factors. This includes fast and energy efficient feeding allowed by the long neck and lack of mastication. That means they didn't chew their food. Fast growth and fast population recovery due to their many small offspring. And advantages of giant size would likely include the ability to keep food in the digestive tracts for lengthy periods of time, extracting the maximum amount of energy as well as increased protection from predators. Argentinosaurus, just like every other sauropod, was oviparous, meaning females laid eggs. The size of the dinosaur would suggest proportionally large eggs, however, that is not the case. Eggs of Argentinosaurus were 1 liter in volume, which is smaller than your average ostrich egg, which is 1.6 liters. Freshly hatched Argentinosaurus would have been no larger than 1 meter, and no heavier than 5 kilograms, possibly fox-sized. However, just like every other sauropod, they increased their size by 5 orders of magnitude after hatching, meaning they would grow 100 times larger in a short span of time. As they grew larger and older, this rate would slow down, but is still one of the fastest growth rates of any animal. As the size of Argentinosaurus probably scared a lot of the potential predators away, even it was not safe from them. The small size of the hatchlings meant they were prey for many different predators. As they grew larger, the number of potential threats reduced, but even the fully grown adults were not entirely safe from them. It's possible Argentinosaurus were preyed on by Mapusaurs, which is among the largest theropods known. It was 12 meters long and weighed up to 3 to 5 tons. It's known from at least 7 individuals found together, which leaves the open possibility it being a pack hunter, which, well, makes them more than capable of taking down, well, large individuals, such as a fully grown Argentinosaurus. A little disclosure here, I've never actually heard of the Mapusaurus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, up until recently, up, well, till this video, actually, and the thought of, well, seven theropods that are three to five tons hunting all together in a pack is just honestly terrifying and i'm gonna have to do some homework on those dinosaurs because that sounds scary and really cool and that concludes our argentinosaurus part two project build at least for now this zombie dinosaur is nearly complete so it's time for the build rundown so we started off this video by painting and getting in those hard to reach places there will be a bit of that in part three but that'll be for the fine details and there was quite a bit of sculpting with clay you could say where we basically got the main shape out of the way which included most of the muscular well structure of this dinosaur in particular as well as well a mixture of different colors along with the two-tone design and well his rather gross rotting tail which i had to do some custom colors on which generally i do not recommend doing because well it's extremely hard to duplicate the color a second time and there are professional studios that will just outright avoid that process altogether however i just didn't have a color that matched it properly for the primal design and one thing i will have to touch up next time is this side doesn't look very well 
bulky in comparison to the other, so I'm going to have to add a little bit more clay for next time. But we're also going to be taking quite a bit of layers off and, well, exposing some of that skeleton once again. And a quick shout out to Dragon Claw for spotting the bunny ears on the last how-to video, so congratulations on having a sharp eye. Unfortunately, I kind of forgot to add Milton this time, so there will be no time stamping this round. At any rate, thank you for watching all the way to the end, so be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if you do. At any rate, that's all from me. Till next time, take it easy.